today's video comes from RHS Wisley and after a week of early starts and hard work in the garden I decided to have another early start to visit another garden. It's about three and a half hours to get here so a fair trek but it's definitely worthwhile. I was actually invited here by a member of the European Palm Society so look check it out VIP and we had a tour by Matthew Pottage a curator. We had a look around the incredible glass houses here and I haven't done a video tour because there's just so many people in there but I'll put a few clips over this so you can see just how incredible the place is. The arid planting, the tropical style planting, there's palms touching the roof, it really is worth a visit, it's so impressive to see. And then there's also the exotic garden, packed full of huge musa bananas, there's a lot of flowering stems there and all kinds of crazy exotics, I know you'll love it. But a certain Yorkshire Chris is actually filming a video in there at the minute, so I've decided to come to another area. This this is actually one of my highlights of Wisley and it's a slight sort of jungle ravine I don't know the actual name for the area but it's full of all kinds of exotic plants some of the tropical style plants that I grow like tetrapanax, scheffelera, wallamy pine it's incredible to see them in here along with some huge eucalyptus so if you enjoy seeing my garden seeing those kind of tropical style plants you'll love this On the way through then and this is where we'll start things off there's some huge eucalyptus trees here and walking through here earlier today you could really get that scent of eucalyptus oil in the air personally i love eucalyptus like i said in videos i know they're a tree with a certain reputation for getting massive some of these truly are massive but if you've got the appropriate spot for them i think they're fantastic trees they've really got that sort of exotic air to them and i want to show you one that is just so impressive you'll really love it beautiful echium on the way that'll be flowering next year it really is an imposing size that one this is a eucalypts in question this is eucalyptus dalrympiana and it just looks amazing with that ghostly white appearance if we walk a little bit closer you can see where it shed the bark it's a beautifully smooth surface it really is an incredible tree this is probably my favorite eucalyptus and one that i wish i had room to plant at home but unfortunately i just don't but it seriously is such a statuesque and impressive looking tree. This is quite a sparse arid style garden with all kinds of Mediterranean and Australian planting, other eucalyptus, loads of euphorbias, pines, but to me, this eucalyptus, it really is the standout star. It is a beauty. Heading through, we've got more towering cordylines, another eucalyptus, some of these eucalyptus, yes, I know, they won't be practical for a small garden, but seeing them in a place like this, they're definitely one of my favourite trees. And as we head through towards a jungle ravine, here is quite an arid style bank with all kinds of different yuccas, including that massive rostrata presumably over there, poyas, so many different succulents, a big agave there. And over here, you'll see one of my favourite palms, the mighty Jubea chilensis. This one looks really healthy, loads of fronds. That's gonna size up in no time here. Gotta say, this is probably the perfect spot for it here. Well-drained, plenty of shelter, but also a good bit of sun. And heading over this bridge, there's an exotic surprise for you. Look at these beautiful tree ferns. Now, you'll know I'm a fan of a tree fern, and seeing them here, this woodland environment, it's such a great position for them. You can see just how big those fronds are. And that gives you an idea of the area that a mature tree fern can take up. I know a lot of mine are quite tightly packed together and I'm not quite sure they'll ever look as healthy, green and amazing as these. Obviously I'll do my best but it really is fantastic to come to a garden like this and to see them growing so well. They've got such a lush green colour to them and those fronds are just colossal. That one's probably my favourite, just look at the size of them. Walking out from under that bridge, the view is even more impressive. From down here, the tree ferns tower over you and they look even better still. Really healthy, 
I can imagine this area is watered quite a bit. There's a hose just around the corner. But even so, tree ferns, it's about choosing the right spot for them in the first place. And if you've got a shady area, they really, really love it. And I really like the effort they've gone to here. I think this is a fairly new area, but with all the stumps, they sort of recreated that Victorian stumpery look and it looks so natural. Especially here, looking off with a big eucalypt in the distance, it really is an incredible view. And there's so many little areas like this at Wisley, just tucked away. I know of any scratch of surface today. It's definitely a place I'm coming back to. But it's time to look at some tropical style, some exotic plants that you might recognize. Starting off with the shooter panics there, pushing up through the canopy, the giant gun right here. We've got Trachycarpus, there's so many of them here. Ginkgo. But as we head through here, this is really the area that I want to show you. There's so many incredible exotics. Versions of the plants that I've got, but these ones have matured and they're really some size. Starting off, we've got Wallamy Pines. Some beautiful examples here. Mine is only a young plant, but I can't wait till it sizes up like that. Xantodesia lilies there. They look fantastic. And this here, I don't know if you recognize this. This is a Scheffler Delavay, which I've only got a small plant of. Mine's like a small shrub size, but here you can just see the size of those leaves. Put my hand next to it for scale. They're really big. So this is what Scheffler actually grow into and they'll keep going past this point. They do become small trees almost eventually, but at this shrubby size, you can imagine what my garden looked like in the future. I've got these on the boundaries on either side, growing up towards the sun. It'll have a proper jungle canopy. And speaking of jungle canopies, this is such an awesome place in here. We've got the tetrapanax there everywhere. Large trachycarpus palms. Again, like I mentioned in previous videos, trachycarpus get big. And you can see here an idea of the wingspan that they've got. This one, I would say it's probably over four meters wide from leaf tip to leaf tip. So you need to leave room for them. Looking up there, another wallaby pine. All those cones on it. That one is really a beauty. But as we head through here, we've got some bananas. Yes, there's loads of them in the exotic garden, but these here in this dense jungle-like woodland, I think they look so impressive. You can see the height in them and just look at those leaves. They're even better than the ones that I saw in Wales at Picton Castle. And this might give you an idea of how big a clump gets. So I imagine that there's probably two clumps here in this little bit. You can see there, when they're flowered, each shooter stem dies, but they get really, really big. Proper solid things. But it's so impressive to actually see them somewhere where they've been allowed to grow to full height. Really are impressive. But as we walk through here, you'll see there's even more wallaby pines I'll show you looking down on them soon because they look even better still. And these are more tetrapanax. Now, I mentioned in my video, looking at care for tetrapanax, how big they get. Just look at these. <laughs> this gives you a real idea. You can see there, I've got to say those bottom leaves are probably a good sort of 12 foot maybe above me. Not 12 foot above me, but 12 foot in height. And those trunks, I've seen them bigger than this, but even so, you can see definitely the size of a small tree. But as we head back this way, just look at those bananas. You can see why you don't want to plant a lot of these tropical plants too closely. Admittedly, close planting, mixing ferns in, it really helps with the jungle look. But each one of those small banana plants or tetrapanax, even the tree ferns, has the potential to be a few meters across. Another beautifully healthy one bright zingy fronds and here is a forest of more tetrapanax and again you can see just how big they get those leaves are huge just look at that one there so to me this is how a lot of these jungle plants are best grown in an area with a bit of shade where they can completely wrap around you and this is the kind of vibe that I really want in my garden. That feeling of walking through an actual jungle. Yes, a lot of my plants are small at the minute, but they soon size up. Trachycarpus, like this, when planted small, can grow a foot or so a year. All their exotics, like the Moosabajou, 
the Tetch Panax can grow even faster than that. And I think really it's that combination of delicate fern fronds and then huge leaves, glossy leaves like the Scheffler that really make this feel like a proper authentic jungle. Mixed in amongst the foxgloves then, you can see the smaller Wallamy Pines. And as I pan round, you'll notice there's actually a whole glade of them. So this is a garden, this is an area that's gonna get better and better every year. As these tower up towards the sky like spires, this will really be such an exotic looking environment. Following the path round up the hill then, you can see the foxglove tree. These are Paulonia tomentosa, which people grow for these giant leaves. If you coppice it back every year, it sends up this huge juvenile foliage. These can get to over three meters tall in a single summer, and they're like just a colossal sunflower to me. Those leaves are really impressive. But if you look down here, you'll see what they look like as they get even bigger. They literally turn into trees. Always a fan of a good dinosaur sign, so I'm going this way. Do you know what? There's just time to show you a few quick highlights of the exotic garden just before I leave and head home for the day. I know you'll enjoy this. On the way, a couple of trees, not exotic, not tropical style, but beautiful things to look at. This is Acer Grissium, I think it's pronounced, the paperback maple. And this just looks incredible with that bark backlit by the late winter sun, or I suppose any sun really. That is a beautiful tree. And if you want something again for bark, you might have noticed this next tree in my tour around Chatsworth. It's the Tibetan cherry, Prunus cerula. And just look at this bark. It doesn't get much better than this. So shiny, so colorful. This really is one of the most incredible trees you can grow here in the UK. If you want something that's just got show-stopping bark. Beautiful things and it's hard to walk past it without giving it a little touch. If I can say that without sounding too weird. It's a lovely tree. So I've just seen Chris taking a selfie with him in the tree fern gully. If he's gonna film there, then I'm gonna film in the exotic garden. So let's show you around. What a space this is then. And I can't do it justice with just a quick video, but I want to show you the plants in here that really jumped out at me. As you enter, you see all kinds of different begonias. There's Mahonia soft caress there, hydrangea. It's obvious that this is a garden that's all about the foliage. And as you walk through, it's the same eclectic mix of plants that I grow. From huge ferns, monkey puzzle, large magnolia there, as we walk past here, you've got a loquat, Indian bean tree up there, ligularia, tetrapan hacks. It pretty much is an A to Z of what exotics you can grow here. Beautiful trachycarpus there. And interestingly, Matthew said that this one here, trachycarpus nova, is the fastest one they grow, which I know is a general sort of experience of people, but he said that this one can grow 75 centimetres of trunk a year, which is really something. Heading past all these court layer gingers there, you've got canners, and this is a Schefflera. This is Rhododendrifolia, which has got slightly more matte leaves than some Taiwaniana, but it's a very, very tough plant. So if you're struggling to find Taiwaniana, I know a lot of Schefflera are actually quite hard to get at the minute. This one is supposed to be equally tough. And here, I just love how they mixed all kinds of different foliage together. I think it's easy when you start a tropical style garden to just have a certain set list of plants, but here there's all kinds, from the common to the rare. And in the back there, you've got a variegated Trachycarpus fortunii. You definitely don't see those very often. And if you do, they're horrifically expensive. But here, given a bit of shade, a bit of shelter, it looks really healthy which is great to see. And honestly, as I walk past, pretty much every plant is one that I would grow in the garden if I could. From hardy begonias at low level, a fantastic understory plants, more hedicums, interesting conifers, which is something, I watched a Zoom lecture 
by Fergus Garrett of Great Dixter, and they really love their exotic conifers there. They just add that sort of structure that permits the garden in winter, and they definitely give it that Jurassic vibe. I've got a Stelia growing down there, another Loquart, and there's a palm that I don't think I could get away with. This is a Washingtonia. This is the warmest of the RHS gardens, I believe anyway. So plants like this, they might take hit in winter, but they make up for it with the summer growth. And this one is well on its way now. Big leaf fans, you'll love this magnolia. It's one that I just couldn't fit in my garden, unfortunately. And it's a beautiful looking thing. And if palms are more your interest, it's a Brahea amata here. Looks pristine with these steely blue leaves. More begonias at low level. And that's something that I really want to improve in my garden, that low level planting. Practically, a lot of my big spots have gone anyway, but also because it really has that interest and color and it allows you to experiment every single year. And here is another Jabea. Again, my favorite cold hardy palm, and this one looks great. In fact, as we spin around, there's two more Jabea there flanking this walkway. And there, you've got the Sheffield Park pine, I believe, in the distance with those massive graping needles. It just looks so cuddly, but spiky at the same time. Just look how long these needles are. Put my hand there for scale. It's such an awesome looking pine, and it definitely fits in with the other exotics here. We've got all kinds of dahlias, daylilies, camarops, can of Stuttgart growing away there. You can see how well that one's spread. It really is a fantastic mixture of plants. And from what I hear, they're sized up rapidly here. There again, the label for the Sheffield Park. That is a beautiful looking pine. And if I had a bigger garden, an even bigger garden, then I'd love to have one or two of these in. So we head through this way, got lilies. And again, you can see a couple more of the Boutia odorata. Very chunky, very happy. And if you look in there, you can see that one's even flowering. The flowers are the size of baseball bats. And it's great to see it doing well here. These mature Boutia then, they're literally everywhere. And here you can see some interesting foliage plants. You've got Melianthus major and dahlias. So not every foliage plant has to be just about the leaves. These have got the amazing flowers as well later in summer. And here you can see a Trachycarpus fortunia that's just finished flowering. This is a strip trunk one. It's been stripped a while, so it's started to go brown. But I really like that slim trunk look. It looks incredibly exotic. And here you can see a look, three key plants, but it just shows that really concentrating on a few varieties, it definitely helps create a garden with impact. So we've got Persicaria Purple Fantasy, again, one of my favorites there. We've got Musabaju Bananas. Some of these, again, they're colossal. There's one again flowering up here. You can see those miniature bananas, if I zoom in. Lovely looking thing. And then surrounding it, you've got Cannas. So everywhere you look, there's bright colors and big leaves. This really is a beautiful garden. I'd love to come again on a late summer evening. A beautiful on flowering away there. And over there you can see Colocasia, even more bananas. The height of some of these is incredible. And apparently they protect certain clumps to keep that height every year to allow some stems to flower. Chances are that I'll survive anyway, but it's well worth the effort if you can get something as tall as this out of it. It's hard to really get a scale on how big they are, but they're at least three times my height. So if we said 16 foot plus, they seriously are colossal. And over there, another Tetrapanax, another Paulonia. And in fact, that one's probably a really good example to show you slightly different variety that one there so essentially you can see it's been grown into a small tree and then they've actually chopped that trunk back and from chopping it back you then get these huge leaves so each one of these leaves they get even bigger than this that just gives you an idea so it really is a very exotic looking tree and if you let it grow it looks more like the one behind from this angle here you can see it is an absolute forest of bananas Musabashi for days. So yet again, this isn't another highly produced video, but it seemed a shame not to have a quick walk around and share some of these plants with you. 
it really is a garden that's worth visiting if you're in the area. The size of the place really shocked me. I don't know what I was expecting, but this exotic garden, to have it looking so full of foliage, so full of colour in early June, it really is impressive. I mean, just look at these giant magnolias. The leaves are massive on them. And then I just wanted to show you these here. These are Pinus patula, the Mexican weeping pine. This is a pine that I've got in my garden. I've got one planted behind the Jubea, and here it definitely shows why I wanted to plant it. You've got a beautiful orange colour to the bark, very interesting, and then it's all about the needles. They're so long, so graceful looking. It really is an interesting pine. And personally, I think they look great with the other feather palms, so we'll see how mine turns out. And again, looking further back, it's all about the simplicity. Here, we've got Persicaria red dragon, and you can see just how big it gets. It really is a great filler plant. And what Paradise Garden is complete without a fountain. Here, we've got cannas at the base, and it's surrounded by inseti bananas, and even more of these huge bootier palms. See there, that one's got a lovely bluey green color to it. A similar one over there. Dahlia imperialis there, which gets really, really tall. But this seriously is an incredible garden. Like I said, wasn't sure what to expect, whether it's gonna be a full on tropical display, just full of big leaves or all about the palms. And in fact, it's all of those things. There's an incredible mixture of traditional exotic plants, if I can say that, along with some unique beauties. The silvery blue bootia over there, that's definitely a stunner. The bananas, they're just sort of colossal. But for me, it's the way the whole place is tied together. It's that mixture of foliage. It's having fun combining plants from all around the world in a setting like this. That mixture of formality with the informality of the planting. Beautiful variegated foliage with green palms and then the exotic pines behind. It really is a great example of an exotic garden. And if you're ever near here, you should definitely visit. So thanks a lot for watching my video. It's been a quick rambling one today, if that makes sense. But I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you very soon.